How do you feel when you see this photo? That's not CGI. That's real footage of Ship 35. Blazing through re-entry during SpaceX's Starship Flight 9. Wrapped in superheated plasma. Temperatures soaring past 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's chaotic. It's intense. And it's history in the making. This isn't just a cool shot. It's a front row seat to the brutal, beautiful reality of building a rocket that's reusable, rapid turnaround, and one day, Mars ready. In this video, we're breaking down why Flight 9 was so much more than a test. From flawless launch to fiery descent, from unexpected tumbles to groundbreaking tech trials, we're looking at everything that went right, what went totally sideways, and why voices like Jared Isaacman are calling this a defining moment for the future of spaceflight. So, strap in. The flames, the failures, and the future of Starship? It's all here in today's Tech Map episode, and it's way more epic than you think. What impressed you most about SpaceX Starship Flight 9? For me, this is the wild, fiery chaos of the ship re-entry, which represents the rigors of the path toward full reusability of a rocket. Let's start with the launch. Well, it's flawless. 33 Raptor engines roared to life, and Starship punched through the atmosphere like a champ, hitting a suborbital trajectory with a 189-kilometer apogee. That's higher than Flight 7 and 8, which, let's be real, ended in some pretty spectacular fireballs. Stage separation? Smooth as butter. Booster 14 did its job and peeled off for an experimental splashdown in the Gulf of America. Ship 35? It coasted into space, ready to tackle its big objectives. But here's where the plot twists. Up in space, things started going sideways. First, the payload bay door got stuck. Yep, those eight Starlink simulators never left the ship. Strike one. Then the real drama hit during the coast phase. A propellant leak in S-35's main tank system caused a pressure drop, and without enough juice for the attitude control thrusters, Ship 35 started tumbling, like full-on somersaults at 16,000 miles an hour as it slammed back into Earth's atmosphere. Now let's talk about that heat shield, because this was the star of the show. SpaceX went all in on testing new tech. Metallic tiles, an actively cooled tile, missing tiles to stress test weak spots, and tapered edge tiles to fix hot spots from earlier flights. Elon Musk himself called this a tiles mission. The heat shield's gotta be bulletproof for rapid reusability and, you know, getting to Mars without burning up. But when S-35 started spinning out of control, that experimental heat shield was facing heat it wasn't ready for. The ship was supposed to glide belly first to spread out the thermal load, but tumbling. That's like throwing your spaceship into a cosmic oven with no game plan. The X community was losing it. And I feel you. At about 59 kilometers altitude, SpaceX lost contact with Ship 35. The vehicle broke apart over the Indian Ocean, and they hit the safe button, aka the flight termination system, to make sure debris landed in a clear zone. No harm done, but man, what a way to go out. After the flight, some insane re-entry footage of S-35 has quickly gone viral. Among them, I can't help but mention a scene shared by Felix Spacetime on X. Look at that! The plasma glows bright orange as the spacecraft battles the extreme heat of re-entry. You can see the timestamps here. T, minus 46 seconds. Altitudes around 67.5 kilometers. This is the kind of footage that makes your heart race. But what makes this even more special is the transparency SpaceX is showing us. They're bringing us along for the ride, through the highs and the lows of their test program. And that brings us to a post that caught my eye from Jared Isaacman. You know, last December, he was nominated by President-elect Donald Trump to serve as the 15th administrator of NASA. Previously, this billionaire astronaut was well known for commanding the first all-civilian space flight, Inspiration4, back in 2021, and Polaris Dawn in 2024. Jared posted on X just after the footage dropped, and his words really hit home for me. He said, pretty incredible to get this kind of footage from the extreme environment of re-entry. 
appreciate the transparency and bringing us space enthusiasts along through the highs and lows of a test program. Now, why does this matter? Let's break it down. Jared isn't just some random commenter. He's a big deal in the space world. He's the CEO of Shift4 Payments, founder of Draken International, and has been a major advocate for private spaceflight. He even did a spacewalk during the Polaris Dawn mission. So when he talks about space, people listen. And what he's pointing out here is huge. SpaceX isn't just testing a rocket. They're building a future. Even when things don't go perfectly, like during this re-entry where Starship faced intense forces, the data they're gathering is priceless. Now, re-entry is no joke. As the New York Times reported back in 2024, when spacecraft like Starship or Crew Dragon re-enter Earth's atmosphere, they're surrounded by plasma that glows bright orange and disrupts radio signals. That's why mission controllers often lose contact during this phase. It's a nail-biting moment. During a test last year, SpaceX used their Starlink satellites to relay live video of Starship's re-entry. But the spacecraft didn't survive the intense forces. Fast forward to today, and we're seeing progress. This footage shows they're getting closer to nailing it. But let's zoom out for a second. Jared's post isn't just about this one test, it's about the bigger picture. He goes on to say, some may focus on the lows, but behind the efforts of Starship and other programs like New Glenn, Neutron, Vulcan, Terran, Stoke, etc., is a massive space economy taking shape. And he's not wrong. According to the reports, the space economy is expected to be worth $1.8 trillion by 2035. That's trillion with a T. We're talking tens of thousands of jobs, billions in private investment, and a whole new era of exploration. In addition, sectors like supply chain, food and beverage, defense, retail, and digital communications will drive 60% of this growth. Think about it, everything from ride-hailing apps using satellite data to new defense technologies. And programs like Starship are at the heart of it, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. As Jared puts it, when these capabilities arrive, they will spearhead a new era of exploration and discovery. I don't know about you, but that gives me chills. Now, I love how Jared frames the setbacks. He says, the lows will become a chapter in a much longer story. And that reminds me of something Theodore Roosevelt once said, a quote that Arthur McWaters shared on X back in January. Arthur posted a stunning image of what looks like Starlink satellites in the sky. With this quote, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat? Arthur tagged SpaceX and Elon Musk, saying, thank you for being in the arena. And you know what? That's exactly what Jared is getting at. The critics will always point out the stumbles, but the builders, like SpaceX, are the ones moving us forward. Stephanie Tyler nailed it in her reply. Critics be criticizing, builders be building. And that's the spirit of this whole space race. Speaking of which, let's look at some of the reactions to Jared's post. Michael Sheets added that MLV, another rocket program, should be on the list of game changers. Penny2x even suggested Jared for NASA Administrator. Honestly, I'm here for that. And Greg Autry summed it up beautifully. We are lucky to live in these exciting days. Even the ones that don't end exactly as hoped are filled with wonders. Other users like Plaid Rockets and Dustin Burnham chimed in, pointing out how SpaceX has reignited a global space race and how the growth around Cape Canaveral is creating thousands of jobs. This is the future, folks. So what's the takeaway here? 
Starship's re-entry might not have been perfect, but it's a stepping stone to something massive. Jared Isaacman sees it, SpaceX sees it, and I hope you see it too. We're on the cusp of a new era, one where space isn't just for governments but for all of us. As Adam Bernstein put it in his reply to Jared, messy road, but the direction is clear. And I couldn't agree more. The SpaceX Starship is a fully reusable two-stage super heavy lift launch vehicle developed by SpaceX, an American aerospace company founded by Elon Musk in 2002. Officially, the system comprises the Starship spacecraft, the upper stage, and the super heavy booster, the first stage. Together, they form what SpaceX simply calls Starship, a name that reflects its ambitious purpose to serve as a versatile transportation system for crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. As of 2025, Starship is the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built, standing at 403 feet, 123 meters, tall when stacked, surpassing NASA's Saturn V from the Apollo era. Starship is designed with reusability at its core, a key factor in SpaceX's mission to make space travel more affordable and sustainable. The Super Heavy booster is powered by 33 Raptor engines, while the Starship spacecraft itself has six Raptor engines, three standard Raptors, and three Raptor vacuum engines optimized for space with larger nozzles for better efficiency in a vacuum. It is powered by Raptor engines. These engines use a methane liquid oxygen propellant mix which offers higher performance than traditional kerosene-based fuels and reduces engine wear by avoiding coking, carbon buildup. The full-flow staged combustion cycle makes Raptor one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Both stages are designed to return to Earth and be reused. The Super Heavy booster aims to land back at the launch site, often caught by the launch tower's mechanical arms, a system SpaceX calls Mechazilla, while the Starship spacecraft can land on Earth or other planetary surfaces like the Moon or Mars. Let's talk about scale. Because Starship isn't just big, it's historic. In its fully reusable configuration, Starship is designed to deliver up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit. And if they go expendable, the number climbs even higher. To put that in perspective, that's more than double the payload of any rocket flying today. We're talking about the power to launch entire space stations in one go, deploy massive lunar infrastructure, or send fully equipped cargo modules to Mars. Not in pieces, but in bulk. This level of capacity doesn't just make missions cheaper, it reshapes what's even possible in space. From mega constellations of satellites to deep space refueling depots, to the eventual transport of humans and equipment for interplanetary colonization, Starship is the kind of platform that finally matches the scale of humanity's space ambitions.